Your boy passed first time. Ah! Yes, it's finally over. What am I talking about? Well, today is the day I finally passed my driving exam. I finished the practical, I finished the theory, and I am ready, just waiting to go and collect my driving license. So a lot of people have been messaging me on Instagram asking me what it's like to get a driving license in Bulgaria and the steps that I took to get my driving license. So today I thought I would make this video specifically for you guys. So let's get into the video. In total, I've divided this whole process up into eight steps. I've got them here on screen along with the times. They will also be in the description or in a comment down below so you can click on them to jump around the video as you need it. So let me explain this whole process to you. This process is for you to get a category B license, which is for a normal five-seater car. So you've probably seen them, you know, the most common cars around. That is what this license is for. So when I started my license, I applied for it first um, last year but then once I applied I sort of just left it behind I didn't really think about it until this year when I was like you know what? I actually need to get this license and I need to get it done with before you even contact your driving instructor there are two things that need to be done the apostolization and translation of your GCSE or A level certificates it basically needs to be a certificate that has three subjects on it that's the most important part so you apostolize using the website i put in the description below and then you can translate it anywhere at any translating place here in bulgaria once you have done this it's time to contact the driving instructor and begin with the first step this step is signing up with the education department in plovdiv or in bulgaria this is done in town center i'll put the location of it in the description below so you can check it out at the end of this video so when you first go with the driving instructor to the regional uh, education inspection department you will need to bring your bulgarian id card your rental agreement your gcse or a level certificate the original one and then the copy of it which you have apostolized and translated along with you. So you bring all of these documents go to the regional inspectors department and just sign up with them at the end of this signing up procedure they'll give you a date when you can come back and collect your original documents back so when you collect your original documents you will also get this yellow certificate from them which indicates that you have been signed up with the government now you can actually legally start your driving course price wise i think at this stage the most expensive thing is probably the apostolization of your documents because yeah it costs quite a lot to apostolize so once you've signed up with the educational department you can now begin your actual practice for your driving test i'm not sure how much this costs exactly now but when i signed up exactly a year ago it costs around 700 levs uh, you pay half of the money in the first installment and the rest of it you just pay in small installments um, until you paid the entire money off so the yellow certificate that was given to you by the educational department keep this safe this is going to come in handy in the future so when i paid for my driving package this included uh, the resources for your theory test uh, theory mock test and then the actual theory examination all of this included in the package including 30 hours of driving experience a mock driving test and then the actual driving test so all of this was included within that 700 left package so i think it was a really good deal compared to prices in the uk it's actually really decent now as far as the theory test goes I would recommend book the theory test as soon as you are told by the instructor that you can. So as soon as you can, just book it ASAP, okay? Because I realized the more you put it off saying to yourself, yeah, yeah, I'll study eventually and then I'll book my test and do it, you will probably end up like me and spend a whole year doing nothing or maybe two or three years. I know people who have spent four years before they even do their theory just because they're putting it off. The theory is not as difficult as you think. So it consists only of MCQs. There are two main websites that you will be provided with. I'll put them both in the description. The first website is called Shofior and this is a really good website for beginners. So on the website, you can go through the questions, answering them as you want. And if you get the question wrong, it won't let you move on to the next one before you actually understand why the correct answer is the correct answer. So it has the questions, the answer, and then the explanation along with it. So it's a really good website to begin with and I highly recommend that that is where you start. Okay, so I just did a driving test and guess what? It says, congratulations, you successfully passed the online exam mode with a minimum of 87 points. You have knowledge, but it's better to do more. So you need 87 to pass. 
I got 87, yo, I'm happy. I ain't complaining. But obviously this is still practice. I'm still learning. I'm gonna get better and smash this driving test. Hopefully 2021. I don't know. Once you're done with the shop your website, the next website is called Apto Ispeed. Now this website is really similar to the actual final theory exam. It has a lot of, for example, picture questions where they will tell you certain scenarios and you have to say what you will do in those scenarios. And then they have just loads of normal theoretical multiple choice questions. The thing with this website is quite a few of the questions when I did my exams actually repeated in the exam. So this website is a really good website to practice just before your exam. The only issue with the website is that it doesn't really tell you like why certain answers are correct. So you would basically just be memorizing things without understanding. And I know some people have difficulty. Personally, I do. I need to understand what I'm doing before I can memorize it. So yeah, start off with the Shafi website, then go into up to his pay, practice on that. There are basically an unlimited number of past papers. So as you keep going and practicing, eventually you'll realize that a lot of the questions are repeating. And when you feel like they're repeating and you're getting them correct, that's when you know you're ready to do your theory test, the mock test. So I messaged my instructor and asked him if I could book my examination. But before you can book the examination, just to stop you from wasting your time and money, the instructor will provide you with a mock examination. So he'll call you into his office and ask you to do a mock examination on the Apto Ispit website in front of him and show that you have passed on that website. Once you pass and you show him that you are capable, then he'll book you a date to do your actual theory exam. So now you're done with all of this practice and you're ready for the theory exam. On the day of the theory exam, what happens? Well, let me tell you. So on the day of the theory exam, the driving instructor may or may not, for me he did, he will drop you off to the place where you do the theory exam. It's on, I think, the second floor of the place. You go up to the place and you see loads of other students waiting around as well. Just wait around there for your turn and they'll call everyone in. Once you go in, make sure you have brought your Bulgarian ID card with you. Hand in your Bulgarian ID card, they'll sign you onto the system and they'll assign a computer to you. So you go to the computer, you enter in your details, your Bulgarian ID card, your name, your address, all of that sort of stuff. And now you can start the examination. The examination is on a big touchscreen tablet. And if you practice on the After USB website, you don't have to worry about anything. You will pass quite easily. When I did it, I think I got three mistakes in total. Um, so yeah, I passed and I was happy uh, that I had it. It is 7.53 a.m. And I am getting ready to go and do my actual theory driving test. I'm really scared. I've tried my best to prepare. Uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna go to uni first because I have a few lessons to attend and then after that I'm gonna meet my driving instructor and I'm gonna go with him to the driving place and we are going to get this theory down. It's about time to get this license, yeah? Let's go. Like, oh my God, I'm so happy right now. You don't understand. I haven't slept for days trying to do this stupid test, learning all of these MCQs all of these flipping driving rules so it turned out i got four questions wrong uh, out of the 45 so pass with flying colors what can i say i am done man is a driver what can i say tokyo drift mate south drift what do you mean let's go the thing is with the theory examination in bulgaria i don't know how it works in other countries but in bulgaria you don't get any sort of certificate saying you've passed the theory examination it's just in the system they've got it stored there once you pass your theory examination it's time for the next step the practical examination now you can message the driving instructor and actually start practicing your driving some people choose to practice before they pass the theory but i don't really recommend this maybe before you pass your theory this is what i actually did just learn how to change the gears learn how to steer learn the basics of you know just how to start up a car and stop it from you know crashing <laughs> that's what i did in the beginning when i first signed up and then i took a year off obviously and then i came back to it and i had to relearn a few things but it's much easier the second time around i messaged my instructor saying i want to pass my driving test as soon as possible because you know my bulgarian id is running out and summer's about to come i want to get my license before summer holidays and he was like okay let's sort something out so for me in total for the actual practical it took me around three weeks of practice before i did the practical examination and passed on my first time so let me explain to you the procedure that i went through so for the first two weeks of my practical driving i did around two to three lessons a week so one day in between each lesson and then on my final week just before i did my practical examination i did one lesson every single day about one to one and a half hours and just went at it every single day I highly recommend that you don't leave a lot of time between each lessons because 
when you leave a lot of time you tend to forget things so when you come back in your next lesson instead of just uh, advancing on and getting on to a new skill you have to rebuild on the stuff that you've done last time because now you've forgotten it and then you waste 30 minutes learning what you should have already known and then you try spending the next only 30 minutes learning new things so it takes much longer for you so i highly recommend try to keep as short of a gap between your lessons as you can so now it is the day the day has come for you to do your first day of actual driving what happens on the first day? Well, so my first day was at a huge empty parking lot near Grebna Baza, which is a river nearby. And on that first day, all you learn about is how to start the car, how to stop the car, how to change gears, how to use indicators, how to brake, how to park the car, how to steer without crashing into anyone else. So you learn all of these basic things in that car park. So for me personally, it took me around 30 minutes, I think, to pick up all these basics. And then after that, on that first day, we were actually able to go on the road and start driving around. Um, but that was scary as hell. It's Hello. <laughs> Driver Saad right here. You drive it near Grebna Baza. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's Let's go down. second, go second. Wait, wait, one more bump. <laughs> you missed the bump. Yeah. We've just been going around like little narrow roads, one ways, and he's been asking me um, what the road signs mean and things like that. Um, so yeah, I've just been learning how to like drive around more difficult areas because uh, he said I was alright at the parking lot with my clutch and everything. Thing is, I'm I'm good at changing the gear and everything when I'm slow, but as soon as I speed up, they're like ah shit, and then when there's so many cars, that just stresses me out, and then I keep getting the clutch wrong. But he's got the foot pedals and everything, so he helps out, makes everyone more easier. So at least I haven't stalled now. Let me just show you around the car just so you can. Uh, see the car that i'm driving and uh there i am driving the car you know what i'm saying here's my gear and then there's his foot pedals as well so like he can control the car it's really scary at first but i promise eventually you'll start enjoying it and you just start having fun so one of the main issues i was having is clutch control which i think a lot of other people have is just feeling that biting point there are a lot of people say just feeling the biting point the biting point basically means just feel the car vibrating. When you feel like the car is vibrating, that's when you know you need to change the gear. Um, it took me a while to learn, but eventually I figured out that's basically what it means. Okay, so after about a week or so of just driving around town, practicing your braking, your acceleration, your indicators, turning, changing your gears, controlling your clutch. Once you've spent about a week doing all of these things, it's time for you to move on to the next step. How would you know that you're ready for the next step? Well, for me personally, I just started feeling bored. I felt like I was going on the same routes every day, doing the same thing and everything was just starting to get a bit easy and tedious. That's when you know you need to move on to the next step. So for the next step, what I recommend you do once again, ask your instructor if there is a mock test site that you can go to where you can practice driving. And as soon as I did this, the instructor knew that I was ready. So he took me to the mock driving test, which in Bulgaria or in Plovdiv, it is in an area called Trakia. Because the place where they do the mock test is quite different from the central city. The main city has a lot of good road markings, you know, nice traffic lights indicating everything. And you know, everything is very clear over here. But when you go to the actual mock test, it's a bit more difficult because you actually need to think about all the road rules that you learn in your theory. This is why I said, it's not a good idea to actually start practicing driving before you know your theory because all of the theory that you learn now is going to come in handy so much. In the beginning, I recommend just driving around the mock area, just getting to know what the area is like, learning all the road signs because there are some cheeky road signs that they always try to catch you out with. So yeah, be careful around those. Just learn how you're supposed to maneuver around the area and you know, just take your time. The thing with driving is you shouldn't trust it. Make sure that you are actually ready before you go and do your driving exam and get a license because you don't wanna be on the road and endang endangering yourself and other people. So once you've driven around 
the mock side for let's say about a week more so now your second week has finished and you're feeling quite confident with the route that you go on it's a similar route for everyone's examination so eventually you start getting used to the route and you know the road signs and everything as you get really closer to the examination you start having lessons every single day i recommend you ask your instructor to give you a timed mock exam because the actual driving exam consists of you driving for 25 minutes so 25 minutes of driving in the mock exam will just get you ready for the pace that you're supposed to go at, the speed limits that you're supposed to follow. And it'll just make you feel much more comfortable when you're in the exam, you're in a timed situation and you've got an instructor just watching you and seeing every single thing that you do. So today is the last day of my mock examination before my actual driving test tomorrow and I am so scared. I've been practicing being good so far. I made some minor mistakes, but... Today, if you move like this, in any moment, you, you are so ready. You go for 2-3 seconds. Yes. If you're not ready, you go over 5-6 seconds, many others will come. Like this one second makes such a big difference. Yes, yes, yes. one second is, is too much late. Mm. We can leave you back of the cinema and yeah. the other seat. So make a U turn. Okay. So, you know, from here, if I make U turn, I will be the left lane, right? No, right. You're right. It's harder to go to the left line. Yeah. The radius will drive you to the right. So, keep to the right, not to the left. The left it's harder. Okay. Now remember in all this, take your time because everybody learns at different intervals. Some people might find getting the clutch easy to get to know and uh, they might find indicators hard to get to know. So yeah, whatever it is, take your time, make sure that you know it properly before you go into the actual exam because you don't want to be risking yourself and risking other people on the road. Okay, so once you're actually ready for the test, then your instructor will probably realize that you are ready for the test, which is what happened to me. And in my case, my instructor just booked a date for me and he told me, yeah, you have a test coming up in a few days. So yeah, be ready for that. Uh, he knew I was ready and I felt ready as well. I was quite comfortable uh, with the road and the traffic signs and I had done a few mock tests. So yeah, I think I was ready for the exam. Pro tip, by the way, I recommend having a note uh, set up on your phone where after each lesson you can write down the mistakes you made and the things that your instructor told you to improve on that way when you come in next time you can read your notes before you get into the car so you don't make the same mistakes over and over again also let's say you don't know how to bay park properly just watch a youtube video on how to do it properly so when you come in next time you can apply some of that knowledge that you've gained on your own into the actual driving and it'll make your life so much easier and you will learn so much faster oh my god it's exam day everyone it's 8 30 a.m right now i'm in a taxi on the way to the driving test i didn't really get a lot of sleep last night i tried to sleep but i just had nightmares of driving all night until like 3 a.m so yeah i look like this but i'm on my way to the driving place feeling relatively i'm feeling relatively confident so so i think i have a good chance of passing um, we'll just have to see what it's like when I get there. So it's the exam day. So you show up to Trakia at around 9 a.m. Trakia being the area where you did the mock test because that's where your actual driving test is going to be as well. It took me around 10 laps to get there by taxi from the main uni entrance. So it shouldn't be too bad. Uh, by the way, the locations for all of these will be in the description. So when you're doing your test, just look in the description of this video and you will have the locations and links and everything that you need. When you arrive at Trakia, you will meet your instructor and the examiner. By the way, make sure you bring your Bulgarian ID card because you will be signing a consent form, I guess. 
um, before you actually do your examination saying that you know you're ready for the exam you know the rules and yeah if you fail blah, 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 all of that sort of stuff so bring your Bulgarian ID card you'll sign the consent form then you just wait until it is your turn in the actual exam the examiner only speaks in Bulgarian because the whole thing is being recorded and they will need to show the ministry afterwards so the examiner speaks in Bulgarian but your instructor will have told you the most important Bulgarian phrases beforehand so when you get in the car you won't be confused and you'll know exactly what he's saying also the instructor just sits in the back of the car as well so if you really need a translator he'll help you out moment of truth i'm in the car right now just waiting for the instructor he's got the camera and everything out and we are going to be driving within the next few minutes and let's see if i pass yeah i'm much less nervous now because i went and got myself some chocolate um and then i just got some water i went to the toilet so i'm relaxed i'm just waiting for the instructor and we go and get this license <laughs> let's go so the examination starts you have 25 minutes of actual driving around that trackier area and then you have five minutes to do your maneuvers so they will pick two maneuvers out of the many maneuvers that uh, you are supposed to know for example you need to know how to go on a roundabout you need to know how to do a bay parking you also need to know how to do a three-point turn so of these three they will pick two maneuvers and you have to do them so the exam has ended and you're just sitting there waiting to see if you passed or failed how would you even know if you passed or failed? Well, let me tell you. So right at the end of your driving exam, the examiner pulls out his tablet and he can say one of two things. Da or ne. Da meaning yes and ne meaning no. So if he pulls up his tablet and you see da in green, that means that you have passed the test. Congratulations, it's time to celebrate. But if you see a red ne show up in his, uh, on his tablet, then unfortunately you haven't passed this time around but not to worry there aren't a lot of restrictions stopping you from doing your driving test again so in bulgaria the rule is that you have to wait one week before you can do your driving test again so message your instructor and just book a practical exam for a week later do your practice again and when you feel ready go to that practical exam again and i'm sure you will pass the second time around Oh my god, there it is. There is my car. I just finished the driving license and your boy passed first time. Ah! I was so scared because when I first started off, um, I forgot to put the handbrake up. I forgot to put the handbrake down. So I was just saying that like, why isn't the car moving? And then all of a sudden I looked down and I'm like, oh my god. And I had to pray that I didn't understand speaking to my you know, instructor like, oh, what is he saying? Should I go? And then I put it down. I just went. So that was amazing. Passed first time. Woo! Now you have finally passed your practical and your theory. You're a driver already, aren't you? Well, nearly. You see, in Bulgaria, as a dental student, you have to do a first aid course. By the way, medical students do not have to do a first aid course. But anyway, dental students like me, we have to do a first aid course. So after I passed my practical, I went and applied for a first aid course costing around 60 levs, which is a four hour, one day course. And at the end of the course, you will do an exam. Now it's a bit weird because the actual course is in Bulgarian but the test is in English so it didn't make a lot of sense there but don't worry you'll be fine even if you can't speak Bulgarian because the teacher follows along with this little booklet that you get given right at the beginning of the course and what I did is as she was going through the course I would just pull out the booklet go on the page that she was talking about and start Google translating so I knew exactly what she was saying. Also I recommend you make a friend there while you're there. I made a Bulgarian friend who helped translate a few things for me so it all made sense in the end so what you learn in this first aid course is you learn the basic anatomy of the human body you learn how blood is pumped from one place to the other how breathing works we also learned a few techniques for cpr on dummies which was quite interesting uh, because each of us had to go up and actually show that we could perform cpr we also had to learn how to use a tourniquet to stop bleeding and just all of these advanced uh, medical first aid uh, activities so once you're done with following along with the course practicing all of these things at the end you are given a multiple choice uh, examination which is literally just one page of i think around 20 multiple choice questions it's really quite simple if you're a dental or medical student so you honestly don't even need to worry about it like yeah it was quite simple I, i'm gonna tell you the truth you get your results immediately right there and then and then you get a little golden color certificate which says that you have passed your first aid course so i've just done the first aid course it was a bit weird because the actual teaching was done in bulgarian even though you know i'm an english student but the test i did was in english 
So at the end of the day, it was fine. Now being a dental medicine student, we've already done a little bit of first aid, so it wasn't that difficult to figure out what they were talking about and you know, getting the answer in the end wasn't that much of an issue. They gave us a little notebook which had all of the topics that the teacher was talking about and she just went in order. So I just Google translated the entire book as she was going along. So I'd have my live translate open while she was talking about the specific topic that way I knew exactly what she was going on about and by the end of it I had the correct knowledge to pass the test so it wasn't that difficult um, it will be fine just use Google Translate that's what I would recommend now one more thing before you collect all your documents and try to get your license is you need to get a um, certificate of good health so you can get this at any hospital just go up to a doctor and ask them to write your certificate what I did is I just went to the clinic that's right in front of our uni it's part of the uni hospital actually and I just went to one of the doctors that spoke English and asked him to write me one um, you just asked them write me a, a certificate for my driving license for category B now it's actually the final step which is collecting all these damn papers you remember the yellow form that we talked about right at the beginning yeah that yellow form this is where it comes into play so these are the documents that you will collect together before you go to the traffic police station which is also called cat in bulgaria so yeah just take that as uh, it is it's called cat so what you collect is the yellow form that you got right at the beginning from the regional educational uh, department you take your bulgarian id card take your first aid course certificate and a photocopy of that first aid co course certificate so you take all of these documents with you to cat and <laughs> It just sounds so weird to say. So you take all of these with you to CAT and you sign up over there. Hand all of these documents to them. And finally, you're done with all of this documentation. They'll give you a date depending on what sort of delivery you wanted. If you want a quick delivery or if you want a slow delivery, obviously the quick delivery just costs a bit more. So I chose the slow delivery, which says that your driving license will come within one month. So if it has arrived by the time I upload this video, here it is. Ah, you can see it. If, if you want to get your license and you are in Plovdiv, you can drop me a message on my Instagram. Once again, the link will be in the description. All of the links for this video of all the locations, all the website, everything you need will be in the description. So check it out, guys. My name is Switcher Dan Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you guys in my car. Vroom.